Hello, this is Steve with another video after a week off for mm, not religious but having a break reasons. There was no school. Uh, so here's another lesson that I've been teaching recently in school and in private classes around B2, C1 level. We watched the film Hidden Figures in class. This is lesson is better if you watch the film and it's good fun. It's a decent film. It's an interesting historical period and there's some good moments in it. So I'd recommend watching it. And then we're going to have a big mix of activities on it pretty much every skill I think we're gonna do some listening some speaking some grammar some reading and some writing so we're starting with a bit of speaking poster for the film imagine you're doing a the part of the activity part of the speaking where you have to use pictures I don't say describe pictures remember because we're at B2C1 so you're using pictures you're talking about pictures but I'm giving you some nice phrases you can use to talk about pictures what's the film about judging by the logo on the floor it could be about space because it says NASA and so on and you can use these kind of phrases when you are talking about pictures because you're then speculating forming opinions on the pictures which are the functions you need to do so there we go there's your little starter tell me what the film might be about if you haven't seen it or if you have seen it and then let's get into some real activities we're going to start with the answer to the question. So I've got a brief description here of the film. You need to complete the blanks. Pause the video, complete the blanks. It's usually English part two. And obviously it was directed by these people because they are the people who did it. It is based on a book by Margot Lee Shatterley about black female mathematicians. They are people, so we say who or that because it's a defining relative clause. And the film stars Taraji P. Henson as Katherine Johnson. She is playing Katherine Johnson. She is pretending to be Katherine Johnson. She is acting as Katherine Johnson. Uh, the film also features Octavia Spencer in the role of the supervisor and Janelle Monet as NASA engineer Mary Jackson. There we go. You've got your answer. That's what the film is about and who's in it and all this information. So good. Let's get into some more detail. Let's do some listening. I don't normally do this in class, but I think this is a nice opportunity to do this. So what you need to do is complete the blanks. This is a transcript of one minute of the movie, a conversation between Catherine, the main mathematician, and Mr. Harrison, Kevin Costner, the boss at this NASA group. And you just complete the blanks. The number of lines is the number of words. It's a great listening activity because normally we don't think about worrying about listening for every word but it does help, it really shows. Uh, in class, I had, to, I had to do this three times before everyone got the words, so feel free to repeat it three times. Here comes the movie. Mr. Harris? Uh, yeah, uh, just set up, you know. And Stafford's heat show calcs? Mm. It's hard to be sure, sir. Hard, hard to be sure. sure. You know what we're doing here? Point to the movie. Trying to put a man into space, sir. That's right. That's right. So you can throw that in the trash. Excuse me? What? I said you can throw it away. Here. It's not an insult to your work. It's just obsolete. That's how fast things are moving around here. If I said I was sorry, I'd be saying it all day. What I'm asking you to do, what I'm asking everyone in that room, all my geniuses is to look beyond the numbers to look around them through them for mm. answers to questions we don't even know to ask wow. math that doesn't yet exist Interesting. because without it we're not going anywhere I mean we're staying on the ground we're not flying in space we're not circling the earth and we're certainly not touching the moon and in my mind in my mind in my mind I'm already there are you Yes, sir. Ooh, look at all the complicated maths Good. they're doing on the board. Because I don't need another smart girl with an adding machine. There we go. So as I said, feel free to watch the video again to go back one minute and play it again. It's difficult. It's supposed to be difficult. Understanding every word. And when you've done that, you'll find that the answers are... You can throw that in the trash. Because the maths keeps changing. Because they don't know what they're doing. Because the, the orbit point changes. The landing point changes and so on. It's not an insult, it's just how fast things are moving around here. If I said I was sorry, I'd be saying it 
all day. Obviously, all the time, but all day is the expression. You need to look beyond the numbers, look around them, look through them. Beyond, a nice preposition that we don't use so much, but to infinity and beyond, talking about space. We need new maths, because without it, we are not going anywhere. Remember, use your negatives correctly. We're not going anywhere. We're staying on the ground. But in my mind, in my mind, I'm already there. Kevin Costner's already on the moon because he believes so much. So there we go. That's your little blanks to do for the listening. Hope you did well. Let's move on to something else. A little bit more speaking. Again, I don't do this so much in my classes. This is more like B2, as you can see, because you've got two photos and one question. If it was C1, you'd have another photo, another question. But the skills are the same. It's focusing on answering the question. What we've got here is the West Computing Group and the East Computing Group. I think I've got that the right way around because they were segregated. So we can compare these and we can say a typical Cambridge question. How might the people feel working in these workplaces? I've given you some little ideas because I want to help you. So what you need to do is answer this question based on these photos for 60 seconds. You can use some of these ideas. Try it yourself. Pause the video. Try it yourself. And you might say things like, well, you would feel a bit more uncomfortable in this basement workplace because it's very crowded and there's lots of people and the furniture looks very old, like second hand. There's nothing on the walls except concrete, just blocks. So it's not maybe such a nice place to work. On the other hand, the more modern workplace is everything painted, everything comfortable, nice leather chairs lots of space to sit and work so it looks a bit better to work there and so on and so on with these kind of ideas noticing things from the from the pictures and then comparing them dark light old modern crowded spacious and so on and you can do the same thing again here's two different parties from the film why might people go to these kinds of parties here i'm not giving you options because you need to try it yourself please try it one minute, put a timer on your phone, get used to speaking for one minute. And again, you might say things like, well, this is more of an adult party for dancing, with music, with drink, with revelry. That's a bit difficult, isn't it? But you get the idea. Whereas this is more like some kind of lunch, barbecue, dinner, church, community event, where you've got your kids there, you've got everyone in the community attending. It's a different kind of party and so on and so on. That's the point. Right, now we move on to what I would consider the main course of this class that I gave. This is a review of hidden figures that I've generated from ChatGPT. I tried to find some real ones, but the problem with real reviews is that they are they're really, really hard because the person writing is obviously writing for a native audience and trying to make it, like, they're complicated. They're really hard for a B2, even C1 level sometimes for a general class. So this is from ChatGPT, which is good because it gives you all the typical phrases that you'd find in a review. If you tell it to write a review, it's going to use typical review phrases, which is what they would like to see in a Cambridge writing exam. Your task, and this is what I did in class, I think it's a useful task, is to take this, I'll put it in the description. I always say that and then sometimes I forget, but I'll try and put it in the description and highlight in one colour. I suggest green because everyone's got a green highlighter. Phrases about the movie in general that you can, you know, phrases that you could use for any movie. Phrases that you're writing about, you could use them in your own writing. In blue, about the characters because again, every movie is going to have characters. So if you're writing a review, write about them. A movie without characters, Koyan is Katsi, I guess that's about it. And maybe there's others. And in yellow, about the themes because again, every movie has themes. So you should write about them in a review. So take this from the description, highlight, think it, reading, thinking about phrases I could use. I think this is a nice activity because there's lots of nice phrases in this review. After you've done it, I will tell you what I would consider some of the good phrases, you know, four or five for each, for each category. You could have, for example, in green, an inspiring and eye-opening movie. Great, let's use some nice adjectives to talk about the movie. Then towards the end, the conclusion, the movie's message, every movie's going to have a message which resonates deeply with audiences of all ages. That's a lovely expression. Talk about the audience, audiences of all ages. And a typical one, you know, this isn't interesting, like they teach you this in your review writing. 
And it's true, and then ChatGPT does it. It's probably going to be good English, given that it's a, an English machine, a language machine writing in English. It's a must watch for families and classrooms alike. Lovely expression. Captivating, educational, it informs, entertains, uplifts, compelling storytelling, powerful performances, leaves a lasting impression, impression, sparks important conversations. Lovely expressions that you could use for almost any movie. Maybe change some of the, you know, instead of inspiring, it could be entertaining or, com you know, if it's an action movie, a science fiction movie, thought provoking. Change the adjectives, but the basic idea is the same. This is how you write about a movie in general. In terms of characters, the movie follows the lives of, and then you say your characters. Great, because most movies are following the lives of some people. They are portrayed with depth and authenticity. Lovely expressions to use, showing your part one vocab, your part three word formation. Very nice. Uh, I really like this, in her quest. Most characters are going to have a try to do something. They are in a quest to do something. So we're talking about Katherine Johnson in her quest to calculate trajectories. Another character is empowering and heartwarming. Great. And another character similar to Quest is in pursuit of something. So the, this character's pursuit of something. Characters want something in film. So let's write about that and talk about the quest or the pursuit. Very nice expressions you can use to describe characters' motivations and their plot line and what drives them. And this is good for a review. And then finally, the themes. You can see it's a good review. It's full of relevant points. Overcoming racial and gender barriers. Great expression to overcome barriers. Again, lots of films are going to be about people who overcame some kind of barrier. In this case, racial and gender. But you could do the same thing for you know, the hero in the film wants something. They have to overcome the barriers to get it. The film highlights the... You could stop there, but I've said injustices and challenges faced by the... Again, it could be... The film could be highlighting something else, some other theme. But in this case, it's injustices and challenges. While also celebrating. Really nice sentence structure. Contrasting ideas, of course. is highlighting the bad things while also celebrating the good things. And this film serves as a powerful reminder of the importance of something. Serves as a powerful reminder. What a great expression. And similarly, sheds light on something. In this case, the essential role of women in the STEM fields. But shedding light on, a film shedding light on. Great expression you can use to talk about the themes that it's talking about. So lots of nice expressions there that you should be trying to use in your own review. But we're not finished there because we're going to take this review again and we're going to make a complete use of English exam from it. So the first part of the review, obviously don't look at it, forget it. Pause the video and complete the blanks using the best word from these options. Take your time, really think about it, read the sentence, think about the clues you've got in the sentence. B2, C1 level, easy C1, difficult B2 I'd say. And here we go with the answers. Are you ready? You've paused the video, you've done it. Then you're ready for the answers. Number one, it's a story, it's untold. A little bit of a trick that you think maybe will tell untold, but yeah, it's an untold story. Number two, you play a role. Number three, it's the space race. Some tricks there, especially for Spanish speakers, because these are all similar words in Spanish, but no, it's the space race. Two people or two nations trying to do something first, they're in a race. Number four, I just said this, you overcome barriers, as in things you couldn't get over, you get over them. The characters are portrayed. Again, if you read the review carefully, this should be very easy, but they're nice expressions to use. The other ones don't really fit. And number six, you face discrimination. You don't suffer it. No, you face discrimination. And number seven, we need a preposition, a linking word that is followed by a noun phrase. And institutional racism is a noun, so it must be despite you could say, although there is institutional racism, and so on. And number eight, what does she want? She wants to an engineering degree. She's in pursuit of an engineering degree. Her pursuit of an engineering degree is the best word for something she wants. So there we go, that's part one. Let's move on to part two and three. What? Yes, I've combined part two and three to make it more complicated, to fit it all in. What does this mean? This means that if I give you the word, number nine, for example, I give you just 
then it's part three and number 10. If I don't give you the word number 11 and 12, then it's part two. So you need a small grammatical word. So you're doing part two and three at the same time because it fits better in this text and because it's good practice. There are eight for each, so it's the same as a complete exam. Pause the video and try part two, little grammatical words, in, on, at, and part three, transforming the word so it fits the sentence when you're giving the root word. You are given the root. Pause the video, take your time, make sure, you know, read the sentence carefully, think about all your options, and the answers are, here come the answers. Number nine, injustices, because we're talking about injustices and challenges, the bad things that they faced, injustices. Number 10, while celebrating their achievements, the good things. Number 11, you contribute to. Number 12, it serves as. And number 13, remind, a reminder. In the face of adversity, as the expression is, in the face of something. Number 15, this is a difficult one, but you have to imagine shedding light on something, because it's like on the flat surface, so it's sort of like the best preposition there. And what are we doing? We're inspiring viewers to, pursuit is the noun, pursue is the verb. A bit of an irregular one, but a good one for B2C1. The message, how does it resonate deeply? Making it, the film, it's a film, so it's a thing, it's it, a must watch for families and classrooms. Overall, it's a, oh, this one's a bit of a tough one, captivating an educational film. That or which relative pronoun entertains, informs, and what does it have? It has powerful, this one has to be plural because a film has performances, doesn't it? There's going to be lots of actors, so plural performances. It's a movie that leaves a lasting impression and sparks important conversations about race, gender, and human progress. There we go, all your part two and three together. Let's finish with some part four. Again, these are typical B2C1 structures. I find this so, so interesting how, watch my videos on use of English part four, because you can learn this. I made these structures based on previous exams, but they are repeating the same grammar points again and again that I have gone over in other videos. So you can learn how to do it. For example, pause the video, try and do all of them, and then I'll explain the answers. You know the rules between three and five words, because I've made this for B2, and you know, three and five words. It's very similar for C1. You must use the word in bold. You must keep the sentence as close as possible in meaning. Pause the video. You've got plenty of time. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to make you watch the video without pausing it. And the answers with explanations are, number one, Hollywood is unlikely to make. Why? Because unlikely is an adjective. Even though it ends in Lee, it's an adjective, isn't it? I am unlikely to do something. So with an adjective, we use the verb to be, yeah? The car is red. And then after an adjective, the verb must be in the infinitive. So it must be to make. So the grammar point here that I have gone over before for use of English part four is when do we use infinitive? When do we use the gerund, the ing? And after adjectives, you use the infinitive. Hollywood is unlikely to make. There we go. Unlikely, of course, meaning improbable. Probably won't do it. It's improbable is unlikely to make. Number two, this is the same grammar point. If it was hard for her to do it, then she had trouble doing it. Here we have to use the ing because it's one of the expressions like the, I had a problem doing it. I had trouble doing it. It's gonna be the gerund, it's gonna be ing. You have trouble doing something because it's like the object of a sentence. She had trouble doing something. Number three, another typical one, how to use so and such. Well, she's so good at supervising. This means she is such a, because such is used with a noun, isn't it? So good, such a good thing. Such a good, what's the thing if she's good at supervising? The thing is supervisor. Dorothy is such a good supervisor that she's going to get the job. Number four, this one's really tricky. Now you have to, to get this, you have to really understand the sentence structure. Look at it carefully. One of us ought to go and meet the astronauts. The astronauts of us. We've swapped the subject and the object. We've brought the object to the front of the sentence. When do we do that? 
in a passive sentence. This is a passive sentence. So to make a passive sentence, once you've figured that out, it's quite simple. We need the verb to be, the past participle. One of us ought to, then we've got should, then the astronauts should be met by one of us, which is a good sentence in English. Maybe in other languages it sounds strange to use meet in the passive, but I was met by someone, the astronauts should be met by one of us. It makes sense. So again, passive, very common on using English part four. Number five, no explanation here. It's a phrasal verb. If you know it, great, you got the point. If you don't know it, it's a common phrasal verb for B2, C1, so you need to learn it. If you can't stand something, you can't put up with something. I couldn't put up with it, I couldn't stand it, I couldn't tolerate it, I couldn't keep um, accepting it. She couldn't put up with it, so she used the white restroom. And number six, again, a common grammar point, I wish, if only, these kind of sentences. And the point is, you need to backshift the tense. He wasn't invited to the party, so he wishes he had been invited to the party. If he isn't invited, he wishes he was invited. But he wasn't invited, he wishes he had been invited. So it's backshifting the tense with I wish. Well, the explanation is always the same, isn't it? I wish I was rich. I'm talking about the present, but I use I wish I was rich. I wish I had studied maths, but I studied history. But I wish I had studied maths in the past. So you backshift the tense, which means if it's in the past, past perfect, had been, had studied, and so on. Right, that's it. Enough hidden figures. Hope you've enjoyed that. Hope it's been useful. Stay tuned for more like this. Goodbye.